Alhamdulillahirabbilalamin Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd ahabbatu fi Allah Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Assalamu kareem Rabbil arshi al-azim An yatawallana fi dunya wal akhirah we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects us all, preserves us all, forgives us all, and guides us to the Suratullahi al Mustaqim. Habatifillah. We're going to start a new series in preparation for Ramadan. Shar Umda Til Ahkam, which is a collection of hadith regarding fiqh sunnah. And we're going to get right into the text and benefit asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all the ulama throughout history of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah for their contributions in reviving the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and blesses us with the means to be able to protect our religion and preserve it and study it and learn it. <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding fasting because we're going to be studying the book of fasting Kitab Siyam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab Al-Kareem Ya ayu ladina amanu kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba ala ladina min qablakum la'allakum tattakun O you who believe observing fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you that you may become al-muttaqun, that you may become pious. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated fasting for us in order to attain piety. And it's an indication that this was prescribed for the nations that came before us as well. That the nations who came before us Ahlul Tawheed, the people of monotheism, from Ahlul Kitab, the people of the book, that they also were prescribed with fasting as a way of seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure, His guidance, his, and His favor, and His taqwa. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the last part of the ayat, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ In order that you gain taqwa. And Imam Maqdisi, Rahmatullah alayhi rahmatin wasi'ah, he begins his first hadith in this bab about fasting. The hadith of Abi Huraira, radiyallahu ta'ala, which just talks about the mishru'iyata sawm. It talks about the that fasting is prescribed for you and that it's legislated for you as Muslims. An Abi Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la taqaddamu ramadana bi sawm yawman wala yawmain illa rajulun kan yusum sawman falyasumhu. On the authority of Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said do not proceed Ramadan with fasting by a day or two days, except for a man who used to regularly fast, then let him fast. So this hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it talks about the fasting uh, Ramadan and fasting Sha'ban, in the sense that how we should fast if our regular fast if we regularly fast in Sha'ban that it's okay to proceed a day or two to be fasting the, the last couple of days of Sha'ban but if it is not our regular fast the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam mentioned not to fast. So, since fasting is an act of worship, 
delineated by a period, meaning a specific time period, it cannot be brought forward just as it cannot be delayed unless an excuse permits its delay. طيب. Imam bin Uthameen rahmatullah alayhi makes reference in this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Ramadan, like many acts of ibadah, are restricted by time. So for example, today we played, prayed uh, Salatul Dhuhr, and Dhuhr is regulated by time. I can't pray Dhuhr before it's time, and I can't pray Dhuhr after it's time, meaning when the time for Asr comes in. Or prior in those times which it is prohibited to pray, or in the time of Fajr. So it's a type of ibadah which is restricted by time. And likewise, Ramadan is mishroor during a certain time period. You don't fast Ramadan in Shaban and you don't fast Ramadan in Shawwal. That is the month that precedes it and the month that comes after Ramadan. So these are types of ibadah or ibadat that are restricted by time. They are restricted by time. Iman bin Uthaymini says, From the legislative wisdom, the slave must adhere to this limitation. Not bring any of it forward. Assume that he is doing something from it before it's time. Within the hadith, Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala informs that the Prophet sallallahu prohibited that anyone should proceed the fast of the month of Ramadan with fasting by a day or two days. Unless he has the habit of fasting on a particular day, such as Monday, for example. Or if he fasts every other day. And that happened to fall a day or two before Ramadan. Some of the benefits that the Imam mentions about this hadith. He says, first, the prohibition of preceding Ramadan by fasting a day or two days. And the prohibition is one of impermissibility, according to many of the scholars. So... Here Imam bin Uthameen is talking about what is referred to as the difference between kara, the, the term karahiya in Arabic referring to karahiya to tahrim or karahiya uh, meaning that it's makru. Okay? So that some of the scholars said it's uh, totally haram the meaning that you, you gain a sin if you do that. You fast in those two days before. And another group of scholars says, no, this is disliked. So anyway, if it is not your ad, if it's not your habit, to, for example, to fast Monday and Thursday and then Ramadan happens to fall on Jumwa or on the Thursday and you, you or, or sorry, or on the, if Ramadan falls on uh Jumwa or Saturday and then you fast you you chose to fast on Thursday and that's your habit there's no problem but other than that if it's not a part of your adah you shouldn't fast it also this hadith shows us that it's permissible to proceed it by three or more days meaning to proceed the month of Ramadan by fasting three or more days also the permissibility of proceeding it with fasting by a day or two before for the one who bitchily fasts, as we mentioned. It also shows us the permissibility of using Ramadan even though you don't say Shahra Ramadan, okay? The month of Ramadan. It shows that it's permissible just to say Ramadan. Ramadan is coming. You don't have to say the month of Ramadan is coming. It's both permissible. In the next hadith, which is a hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, قال, قال, uh, قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إذا رأيتموه فصوموه فصوموا وإذا رأيتموه فافتروا فإن غم عليكم so this is a beautiful hadith that tells us about what to do when we are preparing to fast Ramadan and it's cloudy and 
and maybe it's like the 29th day, uh, or, or sorry, the 28th or something <clears throat> of Shawwal, and we don't know, you know, if, if the next day is going to be Ramadan or not. So on the authority of Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma who said, I heard Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, when you see it, then fast, and when you see it, then discontinue the fast, and if it is hidden from you, meaning clouding day, then estimate it, you know, then, then you estimate. This hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is very, very important. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala an. So he's talking about seeing the halal, the hilal, the uh, crescent moon. Abdullah ibn uh, Umar radiallahu ta'ala an <coughs> informs here that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam attached the matter of fasting and breaking the fast to a clear sign so that the people will be upon clear evidence in their affair. And that is sighting of the crescent moon of the month or the completion of the previous month as 30 days so that it is not a possibility to increase the lunar months more than 30 days so you see the wisdom here the prophet alayhi salatu salam commanded his ummah to fast if they cite the crescent moon of ramadan and discontinue the fast if they cite the crescent moon of shawal so if there occurs something which prevents sighting it by way of fog or the like or cloudy day like here we have which is the the ada here it's the norm in Washington state let them complete the number of days within the previous month as 30 days so meaning if it's cloudy and you can't tell if the next day is going to be Ramadan or not then you would just complete the uh, complete the 30 days of this month, which is Shawal. This is because the basic principle is that it is still in. So the asl, the basic principle, is that the month of Shawal, oh, sorry, the month of Shaban is still in. We're in Shaban. So the asl is, is we're in Shaban until there is bayin, until there is proof to show us that now we are entering Ramadan, either by the crescent moon or the completion of 30 days of uh, Shaban. So if there occurs something which prevents sighting it by way of fog, let them complete the number of days within the previous month as 30 days. This is because the basic principle is that it is still in. So it is not ruled that it has exited except by way of certainty. And this is a qa'id al that we studied in our um, our qa'id uh, al class. You know, the Fiqh Maxims class, and that is Al Yaqeen La Yuzul Bi Shak, or La Yuzul Shak Bil Yaqeen. i sorry, La Yuzul uh, Yaqeen Bi Shak, meaning certainty is not removed by doubt. And doubt does not remove certainty. What are the benefits of this hadith? Some of the benefits of this hadith. Is it shows us the obligation of fasting the month of Ramadan if the sighting of its crescent moon is affirmed. Also, secondly, there's no obligation to fast upon the one who is far from a place wherein it has been sighted. They differ in seeing it because the crescent moon has not been seen in reality or by the ruling. This is a very important thing that Imam bin Uthaymeen is mentioning, which I adhere to strictly. That, for example, if they see it in Saudi Arabia, which is on is so... Uh, you know, it's going to be different than North America. I don't fast with them. And I know there's whole, this is such a difference of opinion between so many in the Ummah. And they fast with their home country. Or they fast with uh, whatever country, whatever Muslim country. <coughs> but the correct view, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, as the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said here, is you're going to fast with the people of your belad in what you see. You're not going to say, well, in our country, in Pakistan, Oh, in our country in India, which is so far from North America, and has a, it's going to, the sighting is going to be quite different, or in China, but rather, you fast by what has been sighted, and the estimation in your, uh, you know, or, or by estimation. 
also this shows us the obligation of completing the month of Shaban is 30 days if overcast or otherwise as we mentioned fourth the legislative obligation of discontinuing the fast if the Hilal of Shawwal is affirmed and lastly there is no obligation to discontinue the fast upon the one far from where it has been cited due to a difference in its being seen and those are just some of the benefits of this hadith. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the to accept our good and forgive our evil, protect us from kulisu wa makru. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.